Farmscry is a brand synonymous with childcare, new mothers and baby products in India. Founded in 2010 by Super Maheshwari, it's become a category leader and I must say it's a hit with new mothers. I'm a mother and I can personally vouch for First Cry. It's one of my go-to apps. But Supam, the question for investors is, when do you turn profitable? This is a very large industry in the first place. We are addressing $34 billion. India uh, creates 26 million babies a year. And uh, uh, we will be $68 billion of mar you know, the size of the market by uh, CY28. And um, with, uh, with such a large market, which is growing uh, at a 20% CAGR, uh, it, it is bound that we will have a journey of our own. If you look at our India multi-channel, it's actually already profitable. We have been profitable for last four years in the adjusted EBITDA basis. Uh, our last year adjusted EBITDA was around close to 8.8% .8 for FI24 uh, uh, for an India multi-channel business. Let's talk about your gross margins. Your gross margins have ranged between 30 to 35%, which is lower than the direct retailers any of the listed retailers, they all have minimum gross margins of 40%. Why is yours lower? And you spoke about improving gross margins. So we have been, obviously, all these years, we have been improving gross margin. If you look at our gross margins for last two to three years, they've been improving year-on-year -year basis uh, without, uh, you know, having any year that we have not improved our gross margin. And this will, uh, this will be a factor that uh, we will be able to uh, improve our assortment mix, our curation, uh, our investment in brands, our investment in our home brand strategies, which essentially will mean that we will be able to continue to compound uh, our uh, gross margins over a longer period of time. Our journey has just begun, although we may look like so 13 40 years. So 40% plus gross margins is possible, right? The Look, others have done it. Solution. We should be able to do it, uh, but we will get there in our journey as we go along. I can't say for... Uh, as a, uh, for the future, okay. but uh, we will definitely uh, strive to get there. It's not something impossible. Okay. Let's break up your business into India, which is about 70% of your revenues. You have international presence in UAE and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and then you have a house of brands, a D2C investments in 21 entities, which you house under Global Base. Now, India revenues in particular. Now, FI24 appear to be a bit of a slower growth for you. Reported revenues have gone up by just 7%. Uh, your EBITDA margins are between 85 to 9%. Again, lower than the listed peers. What can you guide on the India business? So, look, we are, in, we are not at a steady state. We are, we are a new age, uh, you know, ecosystem uh, modeled uh, retail organization today. Uh, we believe that we will be able to... Uh, you know, continue to grow uh, in India as well as international and as well as in global bees because some of the other, when, I mean, other uh, adjacencies that we have done are very recent, very young. Uh, from a profitability standpoint, obviously we have grown meaningfully in India from, as I said, from 5.9 to 6.2 in FY23 and 8.8 .8 in FY25. Yeah. That's if you the look margin. at our internet, yeah, that's uh, that's the adjusted that's the adjusted EBITDA margin, EBITDA margins, yeah. because that's how you should look at at the company, because that's the operating adjusted EBITDA margins, and this will continue. And we are not at a steady state. I can only say, so what is when you compare with listed, for the India look, business? other listed players are at a very tall EBITDA margins, okay. and uh, we aim to get there. Uh, we are in our uh, growth. We will be investing out of the use of proceeds that we will raise from the public markets. We will invest behind our brand, our technology, our supply chain. Um, uh, are, you know, uh, and and uh, and uh, getting more customers, and uh, with that, we believe that we will be able to continue to expand our gross margins, our operating leverage, uh, and uh, uh, through our in our marketing cost and so on and so forth, and essentially driving down, uh, driving up the uh, operating. The operating uh, so, what are tall EBITDA margins that you're comparing? Uh, look, they are in high teens. I mean, they are, yeah. I mean, the good companies. We always, uh, you know, sort of benchmark ourselves to. Uh, leaders who have done there and uh, have become, uh, you know... Uh, so aspirationally, which is that company? Uh, well, they are good companies. They are all good companies uh, where... Name two. Uh, well, uh, I like in person, you know, companies like Page Industries. Page. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's one company I believe they're, they've done very well in terms of EBITDA margins. Uh, even uh, for that matter, uh, Trent. UAE and Saudi Arabia, because that is bleeding for you. That's the biggest drag for you at the bottom line. EBITDA losses um, in the international business was 140 crore in FI24, 120 crore in FI20. 
How long will it be loss making? Is there a turnaround plan? What is your turnaround plan? We started in UAE in October 19 and in Saudi Arabia and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in August 22. And we have not even finished two years. Yeah. This, this month we'll so finish. So how long does it take to turn around? So it'll be a couple of years as the journey has been in India. Uh, so India took how long for you to turn around? Well, if India you want took, to copy the same playbook. Well, India would take a little longer because we started from scratch, okay. right? And in international markets, it won't take that kind of long time because we took all our strengths at a platter, right? And then actually we have done all, you know, uh, the hard work of building our supply chain, our tech so five platform, years, brand. five years, from now? No, 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 I don't think that's too long. It's, it's too really, long. It's too Not long. even five years. It should turn around before that. Well, much, much earlier than that. Next year? Uh, no, no, I won't say that. But, uh, okay. but yeah, we, we'll get there much faster than what does take in India. India, it took us almost nine, nine and a half years uh, to get to a uh, operating break-even. Uh, I think it should take much less. You spoke about how you're replicating India's playbook in UAE and Saudi Arabia. But India is a very unorganized retail market for childcare, while GCC is a very organized retail market. So in that sense, it's different. What gives you the right to win? So and uh, if you want to also comment on your top line, because it's small, it's 750 crore as of last year. Uh, what's the growth runway? So look, uh, although India market is very unorganized, 86% uh, of the market is unorganized. Uh, and you're right on that. Uh, uh, while unorganized is becoming organized, within, we play in the organized uh, sector. As India per capita, you know, uh, will increase over time. As uh, you know, uh, we all know, uh, with uh, with the growth in the in, in India, uh, uh, we will see a lot of unorganized becoming organized. And therefore, being the largest organized player, we will benefit the most. And we have taken the same playbook that we will take from India to Middle East. Uh, while we are operating in the organized market. In UAE and KSA, it's all about organized market. Yeah. And within that, the playbook will remain the same. Mm -hmm. So we will get a much better tailwind in that sense to be operating out of the large uh, organized market with the same playbook of okay. having uh, a large online. And uh, as of today, we are 100% online business in both UAE and Saudi Arabia. And as a part of use of proceeds, we'll be putting out some 12 stores uh, in Middle East mm -hmm. uh, and uh, growing our uh, sort of an omni-channel, multi-channel story as you take along all our India modes that we have built, will be exactly replicating and we have replicated that uh, over a period of time. So we feel very confident of our uh, you know, right to win what we have been able to deliver in India Got it. and in Middle East as well. So you said uh, the international business should turn around soon. Five years is too long, but maybe one, two, three years down the line it should turn around. But what about the steady state EBITDA margins? Is it also in mid to high teens like it is in India over there? Well, you know, look, uh, I would say, you know, great companies will find a way to deliver those margins. So the aspiration remains the same? Yes. Got it. Let's talk about Global Base. That's the third leg of your business, which um, is a house of brands where you make investments in D2C companies. Now, what's interesting is it's founded by you. It's a unicorn, but you decided to incorporate it within First Cry. Now, the question here, question here is why did you do that? Because it's an unrelated business to childcare. You've got investments in home decor, you've got investments in jewelry, gym equipment kind of companies. So why did you choose to do that? So look, uh, essentially, it's a great question. So look, uh, we had a, a great competency that we had built in uh, First Cry ecosystem for a very long period of time of building home brands. Mm. And we built global supply chain, global sourcing capabilities, we built tech platforms, we built brands, uh, uh, capabilities around uh, you know digital marketing, supply chain, all of that what we built, data science, we felt we should be able to replicate in other categories which are beyond mothers, baby and kids category. And that therefore the, we went back to our shareholders and our board, got their blessing, uh, incubated a company, Global Bees, in May 21. And look where we stand, you know, building in these four categories of home utilities, appliances, lifestyle, and BPC, HPC. Today we stand at 1209 crores of uh, FY24 full year revenue and, pro and adjusted a bit of break even already in three years. Okay. And what's the aspiration here? Look, last year we grew 35% year on year. Okay. And uh, the market, Kager, if you look at our industry report, is growing at a 34% Kager for next four to five years. You can make a good guess that we should be able to do... At least meet the industry growth rates, yeah. if not beat it. Well, and on, it just, uh, on the EBITDA margin, you've just broken even. Yes, Can it of go to double digits soon, in say two years? Uh, I won't be able to comment on how long it will take, but we will definitely be you know, uh, improving from where we stand okay. uh, over the next few years.
First price stake in Global Bees? 50.23% yeah, 50 uh, 50 on a fully diluted basis. 50.23. And the balance is held by private equity players? Yes, some of okay. them, yes. So I'll tell you a risk which has come into the market is that PE players tend to churn. They have a life of their investments. So at any point of time, if a PE investor wants to exit, will First Cry look to increase their stake? Because if they do, it's a cash outflow. Look, it's, First Cry doesn't have any commitment. Uh, no commitment, uh, no, commitment uh, no obligation. Uh, uh, and these are very respectful names that we have taken uh, the, on our uh, on our global bees cap table, and uh, I'm sure they will be more interested in keep compounding their wealth here with us than finding another alternative. So you've spoken at length about your margin aspiration, right? Getting to where other listed retailers are mid to high, a bit you know, teen kind of margins. What about on the top line from 25,000 crore? You've been growing at more than 20% for the last few years. Is that the historical yeah, growth? Yeah, so our, our revenue is 6,400 crores. Yes. Uh, and we, sh we have, last year we grew around close to 25%. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we believe we are operating out of a $120 billion TAM which is very, very big, mm. very rare, you know, opportunity for uh, teams like us, management teams like us to operate out of a $120 billion TAM, which is in India, which is $68 billion, UAE and KSA $11 billion, small one preschool is $8 billion, and, and our global bees is around close to $35 billion. So we feel very excited. We're an insignificant player in that $120 billion TAM, although we may be the largest in India, multi-channel, in the India mothers, baby and kids ecosystem, but we're still insignificant. So we have a huge headroom to grow for many years to come. So feel very excited, uh, uh, you know, and uh, hopefully we'll be we'll So what's been the three year, past three year, historical top line growth rate? Uh, we have been uh, at a console level, we'll be at least, uh, you know, 30% plus. Is there any reason to believe why this will not continue or it should continue? Well, I can't speak about the future, but I'll say uh, given our strengths, given our industry kegger that is already Hi, we should be able to do justice uh, to those numbers and... The $120 billion tab. Yes. Okay. So in this, uh, you know, since we're talking about the future, you have more than 1,000 stores right now. You're raising money, uh, close to about 1,600 plus crore. Uh, some of it will go in expanding your store count. Are you how many stores are you looking to add on an annual basis to capture this tab? So as per, if you look at our RHP, you will see we are adding around close to 350 uh, Coco stores mm -hmm. uh, in next three years alone. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we will continue to add more stores as we go along. What will be the breakup between India and international? International will be just 12 stores. Just 12 stores. Just 12 stores. Okay. And oh, for the benefit of our viewers, COCO stands for company owned, company operated, which is different from the asset light FOFO, -F as they call it, franchisee owned and franchisee uh, operated. But I must say that we have uh, 680 stores which are franchisee owned and franchisee okay, operated. Yeah. They have been our great partners in our journey. Uh, so 68% of our stores are FOFO, asset light totally, no CAPEX, no OPEX. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's how we have been operating since day one. And uh, Coco has been a recent addition. So your online mix was more than 80% last two years. This year, I think it's come down to 76, 77%. How is the online offline mix going to change when you increase your store count? No, actually not. So uh, I think maybe there's some confusion in the data that you have seen. Uh, our, if you look at our uh, uh, online offline mix in India, for mm -hmm. example, uh, it has it pretty much remained constant. It was 81.6% in FI22. It was 77.4% in FI23. And it's at 76.9%. So a slight decline. Uh, well, you are looking probably... Uh, India operation. Yeah, so so, so should not look the uh, data for the FI22 because okay. there was a COVID year. COVID year had some, you know, uh, you know, stores operations were during COVID were sure. uh, hampered. So if you look at uh, from a steady state uh, uh, for last two years, uh, it's around almost 76%. 76, 77, uh, yeah. we, we believe that uh, our online story as well as our offline growth will you know, compound at a, a you know, natural curve in terms of both growing meaningfully and therefore this ratio should not change much. Uh, one of the levers is increasing the mix of your, increasing the revenue contribution of your own label, Baby Hug. What does it currently stand at? Uh, and, you know, do you have an aspiration to increase it in terms of the revenue contribution and what can that number look? We have 7,500 brand partners. Mm. 
uh, that we are working and we have our own home brand portfolio as well our home brands is a meaningful share in our portfolio today how much 50 percent uh, is that a fair I, assessment i won't be able to share exact number but it's a very meaningful number since our home brand share is meaningful baby hug is a large part of our home brand which is also our home brand uh, and are usually you would expect that home brands typically since you will do right from manufacturing okay. to uh, retailing you will have a uh, higher uh, margins on the home brand compared to the third party brands so you'll continue to over index on your uh, you know uh, margins as you grow along your home brand story your market share is currently two and a half to three percent in the India child care products and 16 to 17 percent in the organized India child care products how has this market share changed say in the last one year or two years uh, look it will keep changing uh, uh, as we grow along because one we're in the large time and all, all our so strengths has it gone are up, your market share? Uh, it will gradually inch up, uh, mm -hmm. is all I can say. If you, you know, because if you look at uh, the, the industry will be also going at a 20% Kager. So we will also, we will we'll do better, hopefully. And therefore, we will continue to improve. And as we have talked about, you know, we, we are the largest shopping destination already. Thousand stores will become, as we said, we'll be putting our 350 stores in the next three years in Cocoa alone. Uh, and, and with all of our... Uh, the strengths of our, um, you know, Coco stores, Fofo partners, uh, our online, uh, you know, base of millennial mothers, and <laughs> our distribution channel, which also has recently started, where we're taking our home brand products to pharmacies and groceries where young care parents can buy their products, uh, some of the products like a diaper or a lotion or an oil and so on and so forth from the pharmacies and groceries coming back to us, bu buying the larger range of baby health products back onto our channel. Is there like a closed eco door uh, ecosystem story that but you're you are... in that door only for 12 years, right? Because you are catering to products from the age group of zero to 12. Right. After the child turns 12, that mother is out of the door. That's so correct. Is it tough for you to retain customers? And what is the strategy to acquire more customers? So uh, great question, Rima. I think, uh, look, first of all, um, we, uh, we have operated this time itself is so big as i've been saying again and again within the zero to 12 right 68 billion dollars 68 in billion India, dollars by cy 28 that itself is only between zero to 12 right uh, and having said this uh, we are insignificant we have like two to three percent share so we have a huge headroom only 14 percent of the market 16 percent of the market is organized so there is a, also a huge headroom to the organized market to become bigger as the india will you know prosper now ha having but do you feel the competitive heat because when a child becomes six, seven, he also can, he has the option of going to other stores, like say, uh, Agio or, you know, buying from Mintra, uh, Azudio, for instance. So how is competitive intensity and do you, uh, how has discounting changed for you in the last few years? So look, uh, if you will, if you look at, uh, uh, you know, a competitive intensity, we have played on our strengths for a very, very long period of time. All these players have been around for more than 10 years. Most of them have been around for more than 10 years, or at least seven, eight years plus. And they're all having as much capital as you can imagine to, to deploy and to push and to, to do what they have to do. But we have been very laser focused in building solutions to bring joy to young mothers and young parents because we are in the business of building trust with mothers. If we are able to deliver on building and compounding that trust with mothers, mothers will only, only be with us like you, who will shop with us, uh, not just for uh, as a multi-brand retail uh, platform, be <coughs> online or offline, but at the same time also come back for shopping some of the curated brands of 7,500 brands that we have, plus our home brands. That way, mothers will have two main reasons to come back to us for this curation, for this trust, and our supply chain is very unique. We are talking about 900 plus contract manufacturers that are making for with us. Integrated, there are 82 warehouses. We deliver 47 cities, same day delivery, 1,000 plus cities, next day delivery. This kind of a supply chain hardly exists in the country and in the babies and kids market, you can imagine, it's very rare to find. You worked on a lot of adjacencies which have added value to first price growth, whether it's the international presence or incorporating global bees or even expanding the age group for which you cater to right now. What are the moonshot ideas that you're working at? Look, it's uh, not for the investors today, sure, but no, no, I want to know that in your dreaming big, what is it that we're so, looking at? So now? look, uh, when you dream big, uh, you have to also, uh, you know, make sure that uh, uh, you are uh, you are laser focused on uh, execution. That's fine. No, it's this, very important, this, Rima. So this I, baby is going to grow up fine. <laughs> Tell us what else you're working on. So look, I think we will have opportunities as we go along. Although this 120 billion dollar time is very massive for us. Yeah. 
uh, we will be growing our distribution channel, uh, uh, you know, quite meaningfully as we go along, uh, because there are millions of you know retailers, pharmacies, and grocery where we can have these products where consumers can, young parents can buy. And from that demand, India has three demand pockets, right? On online, MBO, EBO, and third is retail, uh, GT, right? We, we, are, we are very less present in GT because this journey has just started for us. So this is a very big growth area for us. Like we will add more stores, like we'll continue to add our online through investment in technology and brand. So for us right now, instead of taking more moonshots in other international markets or other areas, I think today, if you ask me honestly, we believe in our management team is fairly excited to just remain focused on three things. Uh, we will continue to focus on uh, India multi-channel, our international UAE and KSA and our global bees. These three itself will give us, uh, you know, a bountiful of opportunities that we really, you know, want to like assimilate and create value, uh, not just for, uh, you know, uh, uh, solutions for young parents and uh, our customers and also for our shareholders. Is there ever a time when you thought that this is too tough and I'm going to quit now? Do you remember any such instance? Uh, well, it happened in my first venture, not in this one. Not in this one. Not in this one. Uh, because because no I faced challenge uh, big enough that you couldn't solve. Uh, yeah, I mean, because I think, look, when you when in the first venture I saw dot com burst in 2000, I saw 2007 the global financial crisis, and in this venture I also saw a couple of uh, you know uh, crisis that we saw in 2013, 2016, some fundraising uh, cycles that went go up and down. But I think. It made us strong in that first venture, so very, very strong. Funding cycles come and go. We have not raised primary for the last five years. This will be our first primary raise after many years. And, uh, and, and, and Are you a bit disappointed with the valuation at $2.8 billion? It's unchanged from the last round. Look, valuations and all of these are a function. We met a lot of public market investors, uh, domestic institutional investors, foreign uh, institutional investors. Uh, I acquired a lot of them, and especially uh, all from the public side. And uh, uh, we got their uh, perspectives. Our banking partners, uh, BRLMs, have uh, collated all the you know sort of uh, data but were you points. Were hoping from them. for a push towards three and a half? Well, it doesn't four, matter. We are here for long. It doesn't matter. Uh, and uh, we we feel that price discovery was a proper process. It's a process that BRLMs conduct on the behalf of the board. And uh, we met in the process uh, some very exciting institutional, domestic, and foreign investors. And we feel my eyes were also open when we met so many of them because typically we have met only private equity investors in our past. Uh, but this time around, we met a lot of public market investors, domestic and foreign. Uh, learned their perspectives, learned their uh, you know journeys as well. How you know institutions have been built, uh, and uh, it was very exciting. In our journey of long many years, so it doesn't. Uh, there's nothing to disappoint, and it's an exciting moment for all of us, uh, and for all our stakeholders, shareholders, customers as well. I would say that they'll feel so proud to be associated with us, having trusted uh, with us uh, for buying products, uh, relying on content community, uh, India international, and so on and so forth. We feel we'll continue to make them proud and make India proud as well. Thank you, Supam. This has been a great conversation. Wish you all the best. It's a big milestone for you, your family, and the entire team at First Cry. Thank, Thank you. you Thank much. you, Rima. Thank you very much.